Welcome to our lecture online and in order to be able to study chemistry we have to also know how to measure things and the first thing we're going to look at units for measurement is the units of length. Of course the standard units of length is the meter we use the letter M to indicate meter and interestingly enough one meter is defined as one over 40 millionth the circumference of the earth at the equator. Actually they actually use the definition that it's one over 10 millionth the quarter of the circumference around the Earth at the equator, but that actually means the same thing, of course. Now, in chemistry, it doesn't make too much sense to talk about meters or even longer units like kilometers. We usually deal with very, very small things in chemistry. So the first unit we want to know is the femtometer, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. So that's usually units that we associate with the size of the nucleus of an atom. It's usually in terms of one or two or three femtometers, one times 10 to the minus 15 meters. Picometers is one times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and there's not too many things in the range of the, the size of picometers. Now, angstroms is something we will use quite a bit. That is one times 10 to the minus 10 meters, and it turns out that an angstrom is roughly the diameter of, an, of a hydrogen atom. And hydrogen atom is kind of a little bit above average size atom because of the arrangement between the proton and the nucleus. I mean the proton and the electron. But you could say that most atoms have diameter sizes of roughly one angstrom, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Nanometers is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And yes, we use nanometers for wavelengths and uh, the length of certain kind of radiation that is involved in the uh, reactions that we have with electrons in the nucleus of atoms. Uh, micrometers is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, and millimeters is 1 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Now it turns out millimeter is something most of us should be familiar with. When you look at a meter stick or a ruler, and you look at the fine little lines, if you have a, a metric ruler with centimeters, uh, on there you'll see the little lines that are very very closely spaced together those are called millimeters and you need about a thousand of those to make up one meter which is about this long. A centimeter is of course something we should also be aware of this is one times ten to the minus two meters so that means ten millimeters make up one centimeter and then a decimeter is something that we don't hear very much anywhere in the classroom or in textbooks but in chemistry sometimes that is handy to, to know and it's one times ten to the minus one meter. In other words, a decimeter is one-tenth of a meter and it's about this long. It's about four inches. One meter, of course, we have that assigned. Uh, we have that defined here. And then one kilometer, kilo means a thousand, so a thousand meters is one kilometer. Of course, in chemistry, we're not going to use that very much. Now, these other units is something we ought to be familiar with. And if you notice here that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter, there's a thousand micrometers in one millimeter, there's a thousand nanometers in a micrometer, there's a thousand picometers in a, nanom in a uh, nanometer, and there's a thousand femtometers in a picometer. So you can see that these are all a factor of a thousand apart. Um, and yes, these are units that we'll be using readily in describing sizes of molecules, uh, material that is made up of, of elements and so forth. We are going to need these kind of units. So, Try to become familiar with them, and in a later video, we'll show how to convert from one to the other. So there's a nice little introduction of the kind of length measurements that we're going to be dealing with.